Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review and this time uh, so I was contacted by my friends over at IC Station and they asked me uh, is there anything that you want to you want to review for us and so I looked through their their product catalog and they just got this in and I've seen something similar on other um, other tech YouTube channels and I thought this is something that would be very interesting and I think uh, very useful for someone like me who does a lot of electronics work and this is a USB color display tester uh, that actually doesn't tell you quite what it does um, so uh, it comes in this neat little tin actually and that's the first thing I want to point out this is really nice actually um, instead of just throwing this in your backpack you can just shove this in here and it's it's all nice and protected so definitely kudos on the design it reminds me of an old Altoids tin so that's really cool anyway here's the device itself this is a uh, USB power meter essentially and when you plug this into a device, uh, just like this battery bank or a wall charger, um, it'll turn on and um, it'll show you the voltage, uh, how much current is being passed to the load, and um, it'll measure the temperature um, as well as how much power was actually transferred. You can see the last time I used this, I transferred uh, half an amp hour. Um, and it'll measure the time and all that. And there's uh, extra ancillary buttons down here. We can um, focus in on this. We can hit help and it'll tell us what all the keys do. So we can see here, uh, if I press this button, this is the next button. It'll take you to the next screen. You can see a series of dots. This is really not showing up very well on the camera. Uh, it looks really bright and vibrant uh, to my eyes, but apparently the purple color doesn't show up very well on this camera. Um, there's a series of seven dots, and these are basically like seven screens that you could scroll through, and they all have slightly different information. This one will tell you the uh, voltage on the data lines, which is important. Some Apple devices won't charge unless if they observe a correct voltage on the line. So that's definitely good to see. This one will give you a, a larger count. It'll tell you the time and um, the capacity that it measures that it's uh, discharging through. Um, we can scroll through here. This will once again... Um, tells us for two groups um, the voltage and current as well as it'll measure the uh, the impedance or resistance essentially of the load uh, which is pretty cool then we have some of my favorite modes I love these little graph modes you can see here it'll show you the uh, voltage over time so you can see uh, how well your supply is regulated and uh, this one will tell you the current as a function of time this is useful for um, if you're using this to charge like a lithium battery uh, to measure the the current profile of the charger to make sure that it's um, that constant voltage and constant current modes are working correctly and the last screen is the settings menu and um, here we have the first one is how long the display stays on this is nine minutes I believe if you press and hold um, it'll select it in blue now and then if you do short presses it'll cycle through the values so this is zero to nine and then long press to go to the next one. Uh, brightness, so we can change the brightness of the display. I had it set to 4. And uh, whether you want to use Fahrenheit or Celsius. Um, I'll leave it on Fahrenheit just because I live in this backwards country. Anyway, <laughs> so we'll go. And um, one thing I wanted to test with this, um, I've actually sat through and I've tested some of my uh, battery banks, charging them from the wall. And um, it... And um, I just wanted to see if they measured the, the capacity that they're rated for. This one is unmarked, so this doesn't really tell you. Eh, except for, yeah, no, it actually does say 2,600 milliamp hours. Anyway, um, I was using it to test some old batteries to see if they were still good, if they held enough charge. Uh, but what I was very interested in, and I don't think I've seen anyone online do this, is um, take a look at these uh, SNES and NES uh, classic consoles. See how much current they draw while they're operating just in on the menu as well as when you're in a game I thought that would be really interesting to see so I have this uh, portable setup I'm just gonna project um, the screen because I don't have a, an LCD monitor with HDMI available so I just got my Pico projector and we're just gonna get this set up and I can see here current is about 300 milliamps um, at 5 volts you can see we're sitting here in the main menu, and um, our power consumption 
is, uh, let's see, so about just under, what, 360 uh, milliamps at uh, 5 volts. And you can see that the power is 1.8 watts. And uh, the impedance of the load is about 14 ohms there, it's saying. Um, and the temperature is 81 degrees. But yeah, anyway, that's just sitting at the menu uh, doing nothing. So we're going to actually go in and I'll start up um, a link to the past and see how much the current changes. So maybe start up a game. So we're actually, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of hovering always around that 300 milliamps. Yeah, we're just hovering pretty much idly at the 300 milliamps. So one and a half watts pretty much seems to be the going rate. Obviously, if you have RetroArch installed and you're running like N64 PS1 emulators that are quite a bit, um, you know, more power hungry, it's going to suck more than that. But um, yeah, running it's able to run perfectly fine off this tiny little power bank. Um, so that's pretty interesting, even though, um, yeah, we're well into the game and it'll run and just hop back out to the menu. And current increases to about 400 uh, milliamp momentarily, and it'll settle back down. But yeah, it looks to be about two watts max. That's that's enough overhead. Uh, so if you are gonna make a portable uh, SNES Classic or whatever for some odd reason, oops, um, then you might want to consider the uh, total power draw. Let's see how much power it draws while it's just in standby. Um, yeah, you can see it draws pretty much two, two, three milliamps <laughs> in standby. So yeah, that's um, pretty interesting. I've never seen anyone measure that. Now I want to compare that with um, the NES Classic. And then we'll actually turn the unit on. So the standby is the same as much as I can tell. And it's booting right now. Almost hit 400, yeah, I saw it go over 400 milliamps, but it's settling down to about 350, uh, so 1.7 amps. So let's just start up a game. Yep. So I'll start up Castlevania. And you can see it's running right now. I can actually uh, start the game. You can see here. It's yeah, just idling a little above uh, 300 milliamps. Yeah, it's definitely running. And so, um, yeah, we could see it's pretty much the same between the SNES and the NES uh, Classic. Uh, even though the NES games are going to be a lot easier, they're going to require less computation to emulate than an SNES game. But I guess because they're running Linux and it's running that application layer over you know, the OS and everything else, I guess it's pretty much a moot point. Um, they're both going to consume about uh, 1.5 to 2 watts, it looks like. So, yeah, that's interesting. So running the game uh, uses less current uh, than when you're actually at the main menu, maybe because, you know, the main menu, um, there's something else running in the background, who knows. But yeah, we can definitely see if I exit back to the main menu, you can see it jumps a little bit. So yeah, that's that's actually very interesting. I didn't expect that. All in all, um, this is a really neat tool to have. If if you make lithium battery packs or um, you know you want to test batteries to make sure that they're still good, um, this does require obviously a boost uh, circuit, and whatnot. So if you have one of these battery banks, you you can buy ones that you can remove the cell or put your own in. Um, so that makes it actually pretty useful then for testing. Uh, you know, different USB battery packs. Um, this, the construction, um, we can actually shut this off and I'll go through the construction. Um, there's a, like a polycarb um, top layer that covers the screen and there's a protective film. I left it on mine, um, but it seems pretty tough. Um, definitely like that. And I will definitely be keeping it in the protective case uh, because the boards are slightly exposed. Um, you don't want to get any ESD damage or anything poking and damaging the ports or the buttons. So interesting construction. They have basically uh, two boards under that and uh, some standoffs that are screwed through. 
And um, this is very cleverly designed in terms of the way that the boards are cut out to accommodate the ports and the buttons and everything. So actually the back layer is not another PCB, it's just an acrylic piece that has a USB meter decks. But yeah, the center board is the actual uh, PCB itself. There's nothing really interesting on the front. It's pretty much taken up by the entire display. And um, it's just one of those old uh, serial SPI, um, like old school color cell phone displays. It's probably 128 by 128. Uh, but all the interesting stuff should be on the back, so let me uh, break that open. Okay, so the back just comes off. You can see uh, it's basically clear, and then the text is printed on upside down from the back. Um, so it can't rub off easily. So that's a nice touch. You can see here the board, um, the four right angle switches on either corner and there's a uh, microprocessor of some sort. It's a, this is a STM8S, um, an 8-bit ST microprocessor. Not particularly powerful, but definitely plenty good enough for this. Uh, there is a little bit of, it looks like, um, looks like maybe they hand soldered the, uh, the lugs on this jack here. And there's a little bit of flux, but um, that should be fine. There's no traces anywhere near there. Um, other than that, we have the uh, micro USB port. So the cool thing about this is you can either plug this straight into an outlet or use a USB lead and power it this way, and then the load just goes out that way. Um, so that this doesn't, if you have a power brick, um, otherwise this would have to go straight into the wall, and that would kind of be annoying. Um, but yeah, having the option to power it either way is, is actually pretty useful. Um, we have a, looks like a small... Uh, low dropout regulator, probably for generating the core voltage for the microprocessor, um, probably 3.3 volts or something like that. There's a uh, decoupling cap here, and um, that's interestingly mounted sideways on a cutout. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. I haven't seen that very often, that technique. Um, we have a sense, a current sense resistor here. This is probably like a, um, like a, I don't know, uh, 0.1 ohm or something like that. And it's just used to sense um, the voltage drop across that and then used to calculate how much current is flowing through the output port. There's a, um, a SOT 23-5 here. And interestingly enough, it's mounted here and then in such a way that they could replace it with a SOIC version. Um, this is probably an op amp um, used to amplify the uh, current sense uh, voltage because the current sense voltage is going to be on the order of like millivolts. Um, so they amplify it to bring up the, the voltage and then sense it using the uh, microprocessor's internal ADC. And by that point, it'll be like a volt or something like that. So it'll be large enough to measure. There's interestingly enough uh, uh, test pads here for uh, serial port, RX, TX, and then ground VCC. So that's probably, maybe there's a bootloader and you can actually, that's how they actually flash the firmware. Um, that's pretty interesting. Uh, in terms of this port also, it looks like um, these pins are connected. So I wonder if this chip has a uh, USB, um, you know, USB data connection, uh, connection functionality uh, because it does look like the data pins on this USB port are hooked up. Uh, so it might also be possible to, uh, to push a firmware update via the USB port. That would be interesting um, to add functionality in the future. Uh, other than that, there's really not much going on. Um, it's it's a fairly simple circuit. Just literally measure voltage, measure current, and then also keep track of time. Um, so yeah, this is actually really cool. Um, uh, let me actually take you to the site. And so yeah, you can see here it was uh, 22 bucks. It's currently on sale for the next uh, about five days for uh, 16.50. So yeah, um, this is a. Uh, USB 2.0 color LCD display voltmeter and meter battery capacity tester cable resistance meter tester. Wow, that's a mouthful. But yeah, uh, you can see it's actually a 1.44 inch screen. Um, there is a version, I believe, that's upgraded that um, it does what it says. The uh, There's a, a Windows app or whatever you can download that'll... Um, like I mentioned, there's actually a USB data connection that you can actually communicate. Uh, with an external app, but I believe this version doesn't have that functionality. Probably the hardware is the same, just uh, the firmware is different. Um, but if you're able to reflash the firmware, then you could feasibly do that. So yeah, um, it's definitely pretty useful, I think. Uh, it's definitely good to have 
you know, something similar uh, to this in your bag. Um, just uh, kind of like a handy pocket knife sort of multi-tool sort of thing. But yeah, um, I'll link this down below if you guys are interested in uh, checking this out. And um, there is one thing to note though. Um, I did try this with um, the phone that I'm using to record this video actually is a uh, Galaxy S8 Plus and it uses a quick charge USB 3 quick charge or something and I did plug that into that and it does not do uh, I didn't really expect it to do a uh, quick charge but um, it limits the current to I think a maximum of um, an amp or an amp and a half I think it does like an amp and a half or two amps so it will do um, like larger um, higher speed charge devices but it will not do quick charge so it won't increase the voltage to 9 volts and then pump like 2 or 3 amps it can't do that um, not that I really expect it to in terms of this small of a device but yeah um, let's see actually if it says what the uh, maximum current yeah maximum current is um, measures up to 3 amps but I believe at least on the supplies I use, they current limit to 2 amps, so I've only ever used it up to 2 amps myself. Um, but yeah, you can see here, it will actually measure up to 24 volts, huh? That's interesting. So anyway, hopefully you guys liked the video, and um, if you're interested in this guy, uh, link's down below, and I will see you.